Hey guys, so today let's start talking about the basics of stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is basically the quantitative relation between compounds of reaction, such as this one. By quantitative, we mean a specific quality, quantity, like say 1 to 3 or 5 to 2 or something like that. For example, in this famous reaction, which is used to make ammonia gas even to the modern day, we can use stoichiometry to find how much hydrogen and nitrogen we need to get a desired quantity of ammonia gas. The very basic part of stoichiometry starts at dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is simply just converting from one unit to another unit by using conversion factors. A conversion factor is just a thing you learn in school, something like, say, 16 ounces per pound. This is an example of a conversion factor. The thing that's so good about dimensional analysis is that you can actually change the units and make like terms, but not change the overall magnitude. For example, if I want to convert 3 pounds to ounces, I can simply multiply by this conversion factor I just showed you to get 48 ounces. As you can see, the pounds cancel and you can get 48 ounces. Overall, the units changed from pounds to ounces, but the overall quantity did not change. If you have 3 pounds of sand and 48 ounces of sand, they're, they're going to be about the same. However, just like almost anything in the world, conversion factors have a user's manual. We need to use conversion factors appropriately for it to succeed. For example, if I want to convert 5 kilograms to grams, the appropriate way to use it is to put kilograms in a denominator, since this is a kilogram in numerator, so that kilograms can cancel, and we just get grams. However, if you use it the wrong way, you're going to get this weird thing called 5 kilograms squared per 1,000 grams, which is utterly useless and meaningless. So always cancel out the undesirable unit. For example here, since we want grams, but we have kilograms, put kilograms in the denominator for a conversion factor so that the kilograms can cancel. But here's the thing though. You can actually convert from grams to kilograms using the same conversion factor since kilograms per thousand grams is equal to 1,000 grams per kilogram. Now here's a bunch of SI units that might be helpful in chemistry. In chemistry and a bunch of other sciences, we use SI units. SI units are defined internationally and they're part of the, most of them are part of the metric system. Some of the properties, like mass, length, time, temperature, quantity, electric current, and light intensity, are all basic SI units. Their units are kilograms, meters, second, kelvin, moles, amperes, and candelas. And their abbreviations are here. The only SI unit that has a prefix for it is kilogram, because one gram is simply too small for uh, too many things. However, we can also use SI units and combine them in different ways to make more complex units, and they're called derived units. A bunch of derived quantities include area, volume, density, speed or velocity, etc. And they all derive from something else, like say, area, such as in meters squared, is derived from the unit length. However, some derived units can have multiple derivations. For example, energy, measured in joules, is derived from weight, length, and time, since one joule is defined as one kilogram times meter squared per second squared. Many of these units, like joules, grams, tons, etc., can be made larger using something called prefixes. These are, are only used in the metric system, and the great thing about the metric system is that all you have to do to convert from one metric unit to another metric unit is to multiply by a power of 10. This is not true for customary units though, so if you get encounter a customary unit, don't put something like giga here because it's just going to sound weird. 
Here are all the prefixes, symbols, and power of 10 values for very common in prefixes. And now we encounter one of those annoying units which have an exponent. For example, this guy. This is 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed, as it's read. We want to convert this to kilograms per meter cubed, but the annoying thing is, we can't multiply the conversion factor from centimeters to meters just once, because the centimeter and meters both have an exponent. Thankfully though, we can apply an exponent to the conversion factor itself as well. That way, we can cancel out the centimeter cubed and get meter cubed. And to convert grams to kilograms, we just need to put the kilogram-gram conversion factor just once, since grams are raised to the power of 1. When you do the math, the 100 centimeter per meter will cube, and we get 1 million centimeter cubed per meter cubed. And then the centimeter cubed and the grams cancel, and we get 19,300 kilograms per meter squared. And now let's try something that's a bit longer. On March 25th, 2022, which also happens to be the day that this video was filmed, one troy ounce of silver, AG, was cost, had cost $22 and $94 USD. The question is, how many atoms I can buy for one penny? That is 0 0.01 USD or one cent. I put a bunch of these conversion factors here for more information. Honestly, this is all the information that we need. So, to do the dimensional analysis, we first need to find in the troy ounce per silver ratio, which is 1 troy ounce over your $22.94 USD. So this is the amount of silver we get for $22.94. But I want to have cents in the denominator so I can get atoms per cent. That is why I put the weight quantity up and the money quantity down there. Because the money quantity can be converted to cents and the troy ounce can be eventually converted to atoms. Now some of you guys might find it absurd that I can actually convert a weight quantity into atom quantity but it's actually very much possible as long as you have a pure substance. Here the silver is assumed to be pure, so you can't actually convert the weight of the silver into the number of atoms. So if we do the math, let's first convert this dollars right here into cents. I'm pretty sure a good amount of you guys know that one cent is equal to one, one dollar is equal to 100 cents. So here the dollar unit cancels and you get 100 cents here in the denominator. So now that the cents part is done, all we have to do now is convert troy ounces into atoms. Since we don't want troy ounces, but we do want atoms, but the conversion of troy ounces to atoms is actually pretty hard to do. So we're going to have to put together a bunch of conversion factors to eventually get to atoms. It still works, it's just a bit more conversion factors. However, it's probably going to be way simpler than the conversion factors directly from troy ounce to atoms. So first let's convert troy ounces to grams, as given right here. Since we don't want troy ounces, and because troy ounces is in the numerator, troy ounces should be in the denominator. That is, if you want to get a really usable number. And in the top we put 31.109 grams. And then we have to convert the grams to moles. This is the molar mass of silver, and we have to multiply that. So we get 107.87 grams in the denominator, right? Since grams are up here. Over, on top of that, we put one mole. So now we've gone from troy ounces to moles. And we're only one step away from getting to atoms. All we have to do is use Avogadro's constant to convert from at moles to atoms. Since moles are in the numerator, 
I'm pretty sure you guys can guess right now that moles should be in the denominator for them to cancel out. And then we put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power atoms. Always label your units so that you don't have to get confused. If you don't label units, you're likely going to get confused and not know what to divide or what to multiply. So now all we have to do is do the math. So here we just have to punch it in our calculator. And then we get 7.57 times 10 to the 17th power atoms per one cent. Or atoms of silver to be specific. Now we could have just written something really long, like say 757 quadrillion atoms of silver. However, that's just going to be too long. So sometimes we have to resort to use scientific notation, which uses a power of 10. So that was a quick tutorial on how to do dimensional analysis. Thanks for watching. Bye.